So infrastructure and configuration as code. What are they and why do we need them? Before we get into those two concepts, infrastructure as code and configuration as code, we've first got to understand the underlying problem that they're trying to solve. And so I'd like to use this image as an illustration of that. What this image is going to show you is a perfect illustration of the problem that anything to do with DevOps or automation, infrastructure as code, configuration as code, this image illustrates the problem that those things are trying to solve for us, okay? So what this image actually tells us is that a long time ago, we used to build our cars manually. We've got a guy here on the left. He looks like he's doing some welding. Looks like he's got welding glasses on. Looks like he's holding a welder. He's probably doing some spot welding on the door frame. And we have a second guy who looks like he's tapping something into place. They're obviously doing things manually. So most of this car will be put together manually. And there still are cars that are built by human hand to this day, very premium cars. The problem with this approach is, is it's extremely error prone. It's very time consuming, requires a lot of people and is therefore very expensive. And it's very variable as well in the level of quality that you get from the end product. That is to say that the guy behind these two here, just on his own crouched down there behind that car there you can see him, you can see the back of his head. He's gonna have someone that he's working with and the car that he produces will be very slightly different to the car that these two gentlemen produce. So you're gonna get very variable results from a manual process like this and that's definitely not a good thing. You want your results to be consistent and with as little deviation as possible. But with manual processes like this, you simply don't get that. Now, if we fast forward, what we end up with is those two guys have now gone. What we actually have here is a car, the shell of a car, and the two gentlemen have been replaced by these two robots. So these two robots are now doing the riveting and the welding in place of what those two gentlemen were doing. So what is it we're actually looking at here? So this is essentially the next evolution of DevOps. So DevOps introduced us to development practices within an operational context. So develop, develop, DevOps is about bringing things like unit testing and as code to operations. But infrastructure as code and configuration as com code when combined and when you use the more, more modern tools, modern methodologies, actually takes all of that to a completely different level. What you actually end up with is a much more rigid, streamlined process that's faster, better automated, and drastically reduces the error rate and also gives you a very consistent output each and every time. We're also moving away from graphical user interfaces, web consoles, terminals, whatever other interface that you may be accustomed to using. And we're now moving towards a future where instead of using consoles to edit infrastructure, we're just gonna be using consoles to see what infrastructure we have, to visualize that infrastructure and instead changes are going to be made via code. So you're going to log into your, you're going to open up your text editor, you're going to edit some code, and then you're going to commit that via Git. You're going to push that, and then an automated process is going to take over from there, completely hands off, and hopefully if your tests pass, you will end up with that, that code live in production, ready to go. We're also now more seriously focusing on stability and repeatability, which is what infrastructure as code and configuration as code give us. They give us a lot more stability and they give us a lot more repeatability because we can just keep running code over and over again. And we're learning a lot about how we should do this from other disciplines like software engineering, because software engineers have been doing a lot of these things, all of these things, in fact, for a very long time. They've been doing them for decades. And so public cloud gave us questions like, why can't the network be defined as software? Why can't compute be defined as software? Why can't the data layer be defined as software? And indeed, it went ahead and answered those questions and now provides us with all of the compute and networking resources that we need as software. Okay, makes sense, doesn't it? But now infrastructure as code and configuration as code takes that to the next level and actually abstracts away the cloud provider to a degree and puts the cloud provider behind 
a wall of text, a wall of code. And now we've further enabled ourselves to implement more of those disciplines that we're learning from software engineering or like unit testing, integration testing, before we actually deploy our infrastructure, before we actually make it live. So now everything's defined as software and that means that we can now move forward with defining our infrastructure as software and defining our configuration as software. And that's why we're now seeing this as code movement because software is essentially eating the world. So everything is becoming code. Everything in the IT space is starting to be defined as code. As Mark Anderson said, software is eating the world and he's not wrong, it really is. Software is everywhere. If you can see, even take that a step further and if you look further down the line over to the horizon, you'll actually see that artificial intelligence is eating software because we're getting to a point now where we're already seeing artificial intelligence helping us actually write our code, which is an amazing concept. So infrastructure as code and configuration as code move us closer to a purer as code future where everything literally is code. Our software is code, obviously. Our infrastructure is code. Our configuration is code. And it won't be long before we start de defining things like actual physical buildings as code, where we have robots that can build our buildings for us, and we code the building, tell the robot what to do, and off it goes, build stuff for us. So we're moving towards that future where everything is going to be code. And the as code movement is actually moving us closer to a purer, overarching, complete DevOps solution. So our existing DevOps solution is great, good what we have but it's not perfect and with IAC and CAC with code now controlling everything we're actually going to see a, a much better DevOps sector a much healthier DevOps sector and so to summarize infrastructure as code and configuration as code is essentially abstracting away the configuration construction and configuration of our infrastructure and up with code so what is infrastructure as code? Specifically, infrastructure as code is about the physical layer. It's about the infrastructure layer. So it goes up to, but not inclusive of the operating system. So it builds everything below the operating system for you. So we're using code to define the networking, the compute, the data layers, all of these different layers that constitute that physical infrastructure. We're now using code to build those layers instead of going into a console and manually clicking buttons, which is, again, as we said previously, is very error prone and gives you very variable results. So tools like Terraform, CloudFormation, Azure ARM templates, they give us, and they, they abstract the way the infrastructure and give us the option of writing our infrastructure as code. And once we've deployed that code, we end up coming out the other end, we get our physical infrastructure as we expect it to. And so there are many tools on the market that we can use to actually achieve infrastructure as code today. Terraform is my choice of tool. It's my it's the tool that I favor the most. And with Terraform, I manage VPCs, subnets, IAM policies, RDS instances, security groups, network access control lists, S3 buckets, just about anything you can think of in S3, I'm pretty much managing with my Terraform code completely, 100% of it, fully automated. So IAC, or Infrastructure as Code, also gives us a lot of advantages too. So not only is it building our infrastructure for us, similar to what we see here in this photo, we've got these buildings being built here by these cranes. So if you imagine that these cranes are Terraform code, we're writing our code and the cranes come up, they build a building for us, and then they go away again, and the building looks exactly what we asked for. Not only do we get that, but we also get code, and code can be audited. People can see what everyone else is doing, and you can flag up problems if code doesn't quite look right. It looks malicious, or it looks wrong, or it looks dangerous, it looks faulty, for example. Code can also be reviewed by other people before it's deployed, which is a very powerful concept. In operations, the code review isn't really something that's within our vocabulary. It's not a common vernacular, whereas in the software engineering space, a code review and per programming, for example, are extremely common concepts that most developers understand. And the code can act as documentation and also the history 
surrounding the life cycle of your infrastructure so we can look through the code to understand what the infrastructure looks like but we can also go through the history of the changes within that code base in order to determine how the infrastructure has evolved over time and a code base of infrastructure as code lets you roll back problems or resolve faulty code far easier than doing it manually in a console if someone makes a change in a console and does something manually and it breaks something else it's very hard to trace what happened well with infrastructure as code you've got your code and all the changes all the commits that were made right there in the repository so if someone makes a change and it's a breaking change all you actually do is look at the commits and you compare them you look at the you find the commit that made the breaking change you compare it to the previous commit and your so GitLab for example will show you the differences between those code bases and you can work out from that near instantly the change that introduced the broken infrastructure that basically broke your deployment and you can undo that change and get your infrastructure back into a working production ready setup much much quicker than you could do if you didn't have infrastructure as code and infrastructure as code can be automated too so it fits in really really nicely into a CI CD platform because once you've written your code you can run the tools yourself on the console such as Terraform Terraform apply and off you go it will apply everything for you well that same command can be run in a CI CD pipeline there's nothing stopping you from doing that and so infrastructure as code fits really really nicely into a CI CD pipeline into a CI CD process and therefore you can actually now start to introduce full automation around the deployment of your infrastructure in, in Amazon, in AWS, in GCP, in Azure, in any cloud provider that you can imagine. So after the infrastructure as code has built out your environment, the next thing that you're going to want to do is deploy your software stack. So what is configuration as code? So we've got here a photo of a dial, it's lots of switches, lots of dials, lots of buttons, things can be on and off. We've got a few little dials here that can be set to var various values. That's a form of configuration, right? So this panel obviously configures some sort of state that makes some sort of machine operate in a particular way. And there's no real difference between what this panel does and what configuration as code does for your operating system and your software stacks. So specifically, configuration as code is about the configuration of the operating system inclusive and above. So everything above the operating system, including the operation operating system itself. So configuration as code is about defining the state in which you would like your operating system to be in, such as users, files, services, permissions, SE Linux, maybe you, SE Linux should be enabled and in enforcement. That's what configuration as code lets you do. It lets you define all of these states for you. So this user should exist, it should have this password, this file should exist, this service should be disabled, but this service should be enabled. That is literally the definition of configuration as code. It's putting in place a working, configured, stabilized, secure operating system, as well as all the supporting services you need on top of that. It's putting all those things in place for you. And all you've got to do is write the code to define what you want things to look like. And the software suite will take care of the rest for you. Tools like Ansible, Puppet, Salt, Chef, these kind of tools are the tools that give us our configuration as code interface to our operating systems and to everything at the operating system and above. So Ansible is my tool of choice and with it I use it to configure Debian systems, Ubuntu systems, RHEL systems, even Windows systems. And Ansible operates in an agentless manner in that it actually connects to the system, pushes your configuration and then puts that configuration in place for you and then disconnects. There's no additional infrastructure to manage. You just write some YAML files defining the state that you want. You point that at a particular set of systems or, or even just a single system and off you go. So CAC or configuration as code is essentially about managing the foundations on which the software that you offer your customers sits. So it stabilizes those foundations so that you can be sure that when you're deploying your software, the operating system is configured correctly, the right users are in place, the right services are running. And configuration as code actually gives us a lot of advantages just like infrastructure as code does. So it's a code base, which means it can be audited, 
it can be code reviewed and it can be validated and vetted before the code is made live, before it is executed against one or more systems. That code can act as documentation or it can, it can act as a history of the life cycle of your configuration. So just like infrastructure as code, your configuration as code allows you to see how you've evolved over time as a business and as a department and the changes that you've made. And you can see how things were so much simpler a few years ago and now that they're much more complicated. But you'll also be able to see a history that shows you just how simple the configuration as code actually made your job. And you can see how big your infrastructure and your configuration has got and how you didn't have to do any of that manually. It was all done for you by just writing some code. And just like infrastructure as code, configuration as code can be automated as well. So configuration as code will fit right into a continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. It can be fully fully automated once tests have been passed and those tests can be automated. And once you've gone through a code review, perhaps a manual gate within your, within your CI pipeline, you can then deploy it in a CD pipeline and it can go live near instantly. When we combine these two tools together and we put them into a CI CD pipeline, what we're essentially doing is automating as much as the manufacturing process as possible. We're attempting to build and manufacture our infrastructure automatically. We're then looking to automate everything from the operating system upwards, automatically deploy our software automatically. And we're trying to do that in a way that's auditable, it's got a history, it can be easily rolled back, changes can be identified quickly, and it acts as documentation. That's what infrastructure as code and configuration as code give us. They give us that visibility, auditability, and all of that leads to automation. And ultimately, we want this automation because it brings it brings stability and assurances to our business. It allows our business to be confident in the processes that we put in place, confident that changes to our software stack won't fall into stumbling blocks like the infrastructure isn't set up correctly, because it will be set up correctly each and every time. And so it effectively gives peace of mind to the business itself. And automating these two processes, infrastructure as code and configuration, as code essentially gives us reduced costs in the form of time, capital, labor, and errors. It gives us reduced error rates as well. And errors, effectively, they have to be fixed, which requires further time, further money, and further capital. So if we can bring that error rate down, profits will rise because we're drastically reducing the error rate and we're drast drastically reducing the amount of work necessary to manage our infrastructure and fix problems. So when we combine all of this together, we get a complete holistic view, a complete holistic solution to the problem of managing infrastructure and managing configuration of the operating system and above. And when we combine that with DevOps principles and when we put it into a CI CD pipeline, what we end up with is automation. We've got automation in our factories. Now we're looking at putting automation into our IT infrastructure. And that's what infrastructure as code and configuration as code does for us.